Okay, hi guys. Uh, today I wanted to uh, do a video about um, more stuff about Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth uh, military uh, clothing and uniforms. Uh, and um, but today we're looking at uh, not a historical source, but uh, the film uh, scenes from the film uh, Potop or the Deluge. It's made in 1975. Uh, it's a great movie. Uh, the, the the original cut's like five hours long. Um, it's set during the Swedish invasion of the Commonwealth in the uh, mid-17th century. Um, and uh, it follows a uh, Polish um, aristocrat, you know, kind of Captain Andre Kimmich. And um, he fights as he's involved in this war. Uh, it's a fictional story, but there's some real figures uh, in it, and um, it's a, and, you know, a real historical event. Um, but uh, you can find uh, versions of it on YouTube that are like three hours, um, and that's where I got these the images from. Um, so I, I encourage you to watch it. It's, it's just a really nice movie. Um, probably one of the few, really few movies that, that talk about, that show this this period of warfare um, in any great detail um, and it's part of a trilogy of, of novels and, and all of the novels have, have been adapted to uh, to movies over the years in Poland so it's trilogy is is the uh, by was written in the 19th century by an author named uh, Henrik uh, Sienkiewicz uh, and all the, the movies have been done by the director uh, named Jersey Hoffman um, they're great stories, and, and um, you should definitely check them out. Uh, they're fun movies. Okay. But uh, I wanted to look at, in the Deluge, the interpretation of some of the uh, military stuff. Uh, there will actually be more Swedish um, images in, in this presentation because uh, the Swedes are actually shown more, um, like, with good, kind of a good... Um, shown in more detail actually but um yeah we'll go ahead and get into it um so i can go to uh so here's a pip image of the swedish army marching um and they have them in kind of a yellow at least one of the units shown in the movie i think there's another one um that's in blue and when I pulled images for this from the YouTube version, I think it cut a lot of scenes that in the DVD version that I, I just watched. So um, I maybe I'll revisit this in the future if I can pull stuff from the, the full version. But in, at any rate, um, yeah, this is how they depict the Swedish infantry, uh, mostly yellow, got a commander there in red. Uh, I'm not sure if this was a historic unit deployed to Poland. Um, maybe if there's any uh, Swedish viewers or uh, people that know the, the Swedish military history in this period um, maybe you could uh, let me know uh, that'd be interesting so but pretty typical of kind of 30 years war 17th century era um, it just seems like these guys have cloaks and uh, which is a little different than what I'm kind of used to what we're kind of used to in and miniatures um, interesting uh, this is just a close-up of the accoutrements um, you've got the bandolier the, the saber one thing I've wondered about um, this is, is why they the European armies went away from the bandolier because this seems more um, practical than paper cartridges maybe but I'm not sure um, anyway, just kind of a random thought, but those are the accoutrements. I would like to uh, get into doing some living history of this period, but um, developing like a Polish um, kind of uh, impression of a Polish musketeer, but that's probably years in the future if I'm ever able to uh, afford something like that. But uh, anyway, um, here we have a scene in the Polish camp. Um, you can kind of see, it's hard to tell, but you can see there's a lot of different colors among the Polish troops here. Um, and then we've got some musketeers, and we'll zoom in on them in a second. Um, and um, got, they've got kind of more the Eastern attire and, and hats. Uh, 
uh, here's some Polish musketeers in the uh, camp that we just saw. Um, and we get a nice shot here. They've got them in kind of a light blue. Uh, I think this is a neat color. Uh, I think I'm going to paint some some figures uh, with, with this because I, I should have this kind of gray blue uh, in my, my paint box at home. But they also have, you can see they also have the bandolier with the um, with the uh, with powder charge containers. Uh, and they also depict them with the musket rest. Now, uh, a bit of a tangent, but um, in one of the Ottoman uh, famous uh, famous Ottoman chronicles of the period, uh, written by a guy named Evlia Celebi, it's really a travel blog. He notes that the kind of the Hungarian soldiers, so the hijinks that would have been similarly outfitted to the Polish uh, Commonwealth troops, were um, didn't use musket rests, and he kind of uh, says that the, they're stronger because the Habsburg troops use the rests, and the Hungarians don't, and the Turks also don't use the rest. They can they can hold their guns. It's kind of an insult in the text, but it is interesting that, um, at least for this movie, they depict the Polish soldiers as wearing, or as carrying these these rests. Um, yeah, uh, just something interesting. Uh, I have seen the Curasan range of, of Polish 17th century figures shows the the infantry. Some of them, I think there's a, a, an option, you can buy some that have the, the Bardich axes. Um, I'd like to research that more, but um, yeah, this is at any rate. This is how they look uh, here, uh, and uh, we have a commander, like one of the commander characters, with more, more of like a Western attire, um, and that comes up in the film. There's, there's some, some, some of the Commonwealth characters do wear more Western attire compared to the, you know, what, what we're sort of used to from this part of the world. Um, another shot of the Swedish army um, here. Uh, mostly from the back, and it's the same, I think it's the same unit as in the first still with uh, kind of a yellow and, and, and red uh, colors, and then we've got the, the pike and the shot in the back. Um, this is a this is a scene, that's the main character, Kimmich, there, um, but I wanted to show this mostly because we get a good shot of kind of two different types of armor. Well, not a very good shot, but um, we've got the protagonist, Kimmich. He's got uh, kind of a Swedish-style breastplate over top, with, and then he's got his cloak. Um, and then we've got another uh, Polish officer here, and he's got plate armor over top his um, his cuffed on, his, his coat. Uh, and then... Uh, the retainers, uh, kind of with them, wear dark clothing, which is interesting. Um, you know, overall in the movie, the Polish kind of the the Polish kind of background soldiers don't really have aren't really colored that much, um, which is you know kind of something to think about. I think when painting uh, miniatures for for an army for this period. Um, here's another shot of the same character, but I wanted to focus in on. We've got some Polish uh, carbiners uh, or harkab mounted harkabasiers in the back. Um, can't they don't really focus on them for too long? So this is like the best uh, kind of uh, still I could get of them. Um, but we've got blue, a blue coat, kind of a gray blue coat with white uh, and gray pants. Um, so and, and white fur cap. But again, I mean it's not like a really rich color which I find interesting for, for at least it's kind of the choice they made for the um, for, the, for the costumes and, and in the beginning of the movie there is a they say they had a you know sort of a historical costume expert that worked on the movie um, but uh, I don't know so I guess they had some kind of historian consulting when they made the movie uh, here we have uh, another scene we've got uh, one of the commanders in plate armor with his coat. And then at this point in the movie, um, to fight against the Swedes, they, they recruited some Tatars. So um, the character there in, in, with the yellow kaftan is, is, a, is a Tatar. Um, and then we've got uh, some guys in the back with like the male, so the male coat with the male um, kind of headgear, the skull cap with the, the hanging male coif, I guess you would call it. Um, 
unfortunately they, they don't really show the, the kind of the background soldiers in detail on this part so this is kind of the best we've got but um yeah, we see the kind of the male coat as is, is the main armor, the way they've got it depicted here. Another one. Um, again, we've got one of the more background characters wearing a dark clothing. And then uh, another one of the uh, the officers with the plate armor. Um, you know, obviously that, that might be kind of sort of a thing to, to distinguish, you know, the, the more main characters from the, the side characters, but... but um, just a, it is a choice they made, uh, which, which I think is probably at least somewhat grounded in history. Um, here's another scene. We've got some of the cavalrymen in the back with uh, spears, and they're also wearing kind of different shades of blue. Now, these guys are more colored than, um, than the earlier, some of the other cavalrymen in earlier scenes. Um, and then we've got some of the command characters, but aside from this guy and maybe um, uh, this guy here, you know, the, the colors are not as rich as you would think, which, again, is that historic or is that artistic license? I'm not 100%, but um, I think it's probably grounded uh, in, in some kind of research, or at least I would hope so. Um, and that's actually, uh, that's, that's it actually. Um, that's all the, the good stills I was able to pull. Um, but it, like I said, it's, it's a five hour movie. So there's, there's a lot to uh, kind of, kind of look at in it. Um, but I, I think it does give you some good, um, probably good inspiration for, for doing like a, uh, uh, Swedish or Polish army for this period. Um, I'm not really ready to do Swedes uh, yet, but um, I think that might be fun in the future. Do a 15 mil uh, Swedish army um, to fight against the, the uh, Commonwealth forces. But um, yeah, uh, well, I, I, I hope you found this one at least somewhat informative. Uh, I know the picture quality isn't uh, great, but um, I, I, I tried to do, do my best. Um, so. Yeah, definitely check out uh, Potup, and um, I hope you uh, like the video, and I'll uh, talk to you guys in the next one.